Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Global Space Program 1.11. In this video I begin by retesting the Scavenger 1 after having made some adjustments. It is sort of a departure from what we're supposed to be doing. We have missions to do, but I think it's of sufficient interest to me to get this right. And I think it's probably interesting enough for viewers as well. So I've added these parts out here. I changed the parts here from there was a triangular one and rectangular ones here. Instead I went with these swept wings. Uh, to make it look a little bit better. It's just for looks. Why are the outsides tilted up? And that's because I didn't have a good piece to put here. Uh, so, I mean, I guess I could have used like one of the connector type E's here and in a small triangular piece. But rather than doing that, uh, because that would sort of break up the lines, it's an aesthetic thing. Uh, I put the small delta wing and that looks awkward if it's all flat because the the sweep is changing along it. You'd want it to continue along that line or something. So I just turned it up so that it looks a little bit better. So purely aesthetic. I added these parts back here so that we covered the engines, those two anyway, still. And also that continues to help with pitch and then shifted the wing forward a bit. So it's a little bit closer to the center of mass. We are still um, having this tank a little bit underfueled and that tank empty for the test. And I did add a drogue chute here uh, and also brakes. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I didn't want to test with the drogue chute yet because um, on the landing last time I didn't want the drogue chute to see if I could land uh, with it drained. Because after all we, uh, we were able to see how it was on takeoff, it didn't really take off properly from the runway. And after that, uh, I wanted to see its dynamics when it's drained the fuel and whether it could sit down safely without fuel, without a drogue chute. You know, you don't want to test with the drogue chute. You use the drogue chute just in case, uh, especially for bad terrain. If we're landing on a runway, we shouldn't need the drogue chute. Uh, there's every chance that this thing is going to have to land on bumpy terrain later on, and then we'll use the drogue chute. Uh, we don't want it for when we're landing on a runway. So we should be able to land on a runway safely. Now the question is whether adding these wing pieces will help us take off and land safely without it being awkward. And well, we're going to find out without a Kerbal. <laughs> or definitely not two Kerbals. I also have to be concerned about the fact that we are going to be putting payload in the bay. So yeah, that is another thing to think about. We are going to be bringing some stuff back, so we're not going to be completely empty. Okay, so SAS on, throttle is up. I don't know if SAS being on is a good thing necessarily. All right. At least it wasn't doing anything weird at the start here. Okay, can we take off? We really should be able to take off now. Ah, uh, okay. We got it. Barely. Gosh, that's... I'm pulling up as hard as I can. It may be that the engines are not placed very well. We need us about that much thrust just to... Well, we're pulling up, so it's got a high angle of attack. Let me throttle down here. Okay. As long as we're pointing through prograde, it's easier. Okay, so we took off safely with this amount of wing. We need to be able to control it though, so we don't end up in the water. Don't know how good a boat this is. Probably not too bad, actually. We technically have more drag now because of the extra wing pieces. I'll start turning now. I mean, we have a lot of fuel, but then again, let's see if we can land with it, I suppose. Yeah, we're off to the side because we're going faster. And I'm using all my pitch authority, so hopefully we can pull up a little bit here. It's still sort of falling like a rock kind of thing. Oh, we're going to need some engines. Not ideal. Okay, how does it feel like that? Losing speed pretty quickly even though we're going down. Lots of drag. The shuttle went down at a 20 degree angle. There we're still losing speed. <laughs> so it's not great. 
Last time we bounced a lot, which makes me think that the stall speed of this is lower than I'm expecting as far as when it's a little bit dry here. But it should lose its speed fast, so it's tough. Uh, well, okay, right there I can't pull up anymore, so it's definitely functionally stalling. Okay. Okay, well, no bouncy this time. Well, it's better. Is it really what I want? I don't know. It's a compromise based on the parts that we have available right now. Especially since this tank gets no body lift, neither does that tank, you know. We are missing out on some lift here, but and probably are getting lift in the wrong places. But anyway, recover vessel. I think we'll turn it into a shuttle now. Because we need all the fuel in this in order to transfer to Duna and do all the mission stuff. We can't uh, use it just for launch unless we want to refuel it in orbit. But I don't want to, if we can avoid it. Putting in the rest of the fuel. We don't need to worry about balance. Um... Well, we don't need to worry about the center mass being too far forward when we are on our way to space or in space. We don't have nice big tanks, so we're going to have to make do on that. We're going to have to have more jumbo 64s, and we're going to have boosters. So, uh, by default, the space plane has 3,394 meters per second. And that's at uh, altitude. It's 4,227 meters per second in vacuum. So that's pretty good. And we have the accoutrement in the bay, the tugs and all. Of course, we're going to be carrying payload back, so that's a little bit more complicated. But I think it should be able to fulfill the mission. The cockpit is technically dead mass right now, because we're not going to be sending Kerbals on this run. We're going to test it out without Kerbals. When we do debris pick up around Kerbin, we'll have Kerbals. I think what we want, or aesthetics, really, it is something like that. That'll look better, but do we really want to go with looks? Well, we'll see. So, enable crossfeed, and let's have that there. So now we get 1,700 meters per second from these tanks, lasting about six, uh, sorry, five minutes. So five minutes there. We would do better to have that all lit later, but I don't know if we have a choice. <laughs> um, our center of thrust is over here and our center of mass is over there. Now for a while, we'll have boosters. And we need to decide whether solids are good enough or whether we have to do liquids. It's possible we have to do liquids. Uh, you can see with the mainsail there, that's a little bit closer. It could probably point through that center of mass without being tilted in any way. So right now, well, the thrust weight ratio is pretty low, huh? Even with those firing as well. So maybe we'll need like a full mainsail heavy stack on this side. I don't think, maybe we'll add SRBs even. So we'll have a mainsail heavy stack plus SRBs, that'll be special. Well, this is sort of me trying to be fancy here. I don't know, is that good enough? As far as pointing through the center mass, will it gimbal enough? It's a little bit tough to say. We still don't have enough delta V as far as I can tell. We have enough thrust to weight ratio off the ground, but we would have to use some of the space plane's fuel to get into orbit. So it's either the Pollux. Uh, I could sort of see this sort of thing going. This says, I've seen other people do this. I, I've never done like a five in a row deal before, but I've seen it happen. Um, I'm just mocking it up right now. Hmm. 
We could have liquid fuel tanks on top just to keep the slope of it going. And feed those liquid fuel tanks in. This is wicked stuff right here. Hmm, I think that's probably a little bit too much. So, we are gonna have a flop. That's some sort of tower of power right there. Well, now we have to make sure it all separates fine without hitting the wing at all. I don't know if we got extra Delta V out of that at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if we're getting extra Delta V from these boosters. But then it's not reading this... Uh, well, no, that's, we're not in vacuum. Okay. Vacuum. Um, I mean, maybe 200? <laughs> Doesn't seem like a whole lot. Boosters. SRBs in particular. Horrible. That's uh, quite a ride. That's quite a ride. The lift is also a curiosity. We, I mean, as far as handling this on launch is concerned, the fact that we've got all this lift on this side is going to somewhat cause problems for us. Um, we, we want the shuttle to actually be lower mounted, come to think of it. Uh, because the center of lift is too high right now. Like, the real shuttle stack, it's uh, lower mounted too. But that's going to kill our lines. I, my, my wonderful look of the thing gets diminished. We want the lower tanks to drain first. And so I'm going to reduce these to 10. Okay, it's still an interesting vector there. Now I have to sort out the little separatrons to make sure they're on the right stage. Okay, and finally this is definitely gonna need launch clamps. I said finally, but we actually need a lot of auto strutting. This is a little bit sad. It was looking a lot better before I had to shift it down. And we might that might not be shifted down enough, come to think of it, but we'll work with it. Anyway, um, this one, yeah, well, let's just have this uh, attached by, not root part, grandparent part. And we really don't need to do a roll program. Let's just go out like that. Okay, well, what are the chances? <laughs> what are the chances this is going to work out? Hmm, I don't know. Let's find out. No Kerbals. Not for this run. It's going to be interesting. Okay, first thing, it is sort of wiggling a bit. It's not quite at the peak there. But we're going to be turning opposite that anyway, so I guess that's all right. Alright, it's all gonna happen at once. Let's find out. Launch. Oh god. Okay, stop. Oh, we can't stop the SRBs. I didn't throw up. <laughs> well, we're just gonna let the SRBs run. And then we'll recover vessel. <laughs> uh, I always say it. Uh, throttle up, SAS on. Did I say it this time? No. Sure enough, this happens. Well, it is now an SRB test. We're going to lose the value of the solid fuel. But altogether, uh, it could have gone worse. We had a little bit of launch eagerness there. Launch fever. Okay, recover vessel. It didn't quite get down to zero uh, solid fuel there, did it? Okay, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Oh, 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 no, no, okay, okay, okay. Okay, that was not ideal. We'll recover this part. Okay, so yeah, obviously too much 
thrust on one side. You done? In realism overall, the gimbling would be enough, but the engines gimbal a lot more in realism overall than here. It's like 10 degrees. Here it's 2 degrees. Oh, we got the cabin back. See? It'd be perfectly safe. Okay, well, I'm gonna go... We're gonna have to tilt the engines, so... I'm gonna have to go with the bare ones, so that'll look right when I tilt it. And... Let's see. Center of mass, center of thrust. I mean, the center of lift might also be an issue here. We're gonna put these engines on individually, so I can tilt them individually. Otherwise, they'll tilt in the wrong symmetry. I don't know if there's a way nowadays to change that. But. Okay, that appears to point through the center of mass a little bit, but time to hold up a ruler to the screen. Let's see, let me try and get as good an orthographic view as I can. Maybe, maybe. There is still the lift problem though. Okay, and launch. Well, it's better overall. The nose is a bit floppy. Oh, oh, the lift is sort of bringing our prograde vector down a bit fast. I'm just pushing down on the stick as much as possible right now. The center of mass is going to change too much, I think. It's going to be really heavy on the shuttle side and it doesn't have enough thrust. Well, I don't know. Spin stabilize? Uh, that's actually hard for me because I have to constantly change between pushing up and pushing down on the stick. Well, we're sideways. I think we'll go with lift here. I think that might help. Yeah, I, I can let go of the stick right now. Okay, no wings were destroyed in the separation of those boosters. Um, we need to actually go down now. Controlling this is hard. I think I overdid the Delta V though. Assuming it's not draining these tanks. Doesn't look like it. Okay, nope, I let go of the stick for a sec there. Ooh, purple. Oh yeah, I way overdid it on the Delta V. <laughs> I think. Oh, these are drained. Oh, because of that ways. I, I, the crossfeed works both ways? Uh oh. Um, right. Right, okay, so those go off. Alright, oh no, I didn't overdo it. This is about right now. We actually need to go up. I don't want to start using the space plane fuel for the mainsail. I shouldn't have done enable crossfeed, I should just run the fuel lines. Oh, 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 it's getting imbalanced. Ah. Uh oh. Um, let me just thrust limit this side manually like that. I don't suppose we could get some gimbling, uh, not gimbling, uh, reaction wheel here, please. Okay, we'll just continue rolling this way. Ooh, it's still trying to roll this way. Oh, and that way. That that's also rolling that way. Um, can we? This is not optimal.
Okay, RCS on. Not when I wanted to use the RCS, but... Okay, we're gonna need to just try to limit that a whole lot more. Oh, we're done. Separation. Okay, so now we can just use these. Let's just focus on not dying here. Okay, we'll uh, circularize more when we get to apoapsis. Okay, so I'll have it prepare to be prograde. Let's open up the cargo bay. So that the solar panels are there and we probably use some of the RCS on the probes too. Yep. Okay, well, we're in orbit. Let's get this thing to Duna. We need to send a Duna lander, though. I mean, we should do that this time as well. It's maybe not the most correct angle, phase angle. We'll wait in orbit. We thankfully have the strongest relay dish available, so that's not a problem, hopefully. It's all such the lines we could be using. On the bright side, we can arrow break, potentially. I don't know how well that'll go, but potentially we can arrow break. Okay, now we have an encounter. The launch stack for this will have to be improved. <laughs> 3.75 meter tanks would probably help. Okay, I'm gonna tell it to point to prograde. It's gonna take a little bit of time to do that and verify our communications. We're here. We've got Comsats, uh, Comsat 4 there, and also lines to Comsat 5 and potentially also the moon to help out. So we should be good. Last time when we sent the lander, we just landed in the wrong place. It sort of worked, so... Maybe I don't need to design one from scratch, is what I'm saying. Okay... And... go. On our way to Duna. Okay, burn completed. And let's see. Well, uh, it's close. Uh, I think we'll just do uh, adjustment burn here to finish that off. Because from here we couldn't really get close anyway. Now we eventually have to get those pieces of debris, right? One is up... No, no, that's not the debris. Uh, where is the debris? There's one module here, so we might as well get close first and grab that one because we're going to want an arrow break so I do not want to actually land on Duna <laughs> uh, that would be bad so only a light arrow break to help out and then if we need to do more we'll do with the engines so that's a good pass I think possibly a little bit closer to the module in inclination it's touchy though uh, Okay, let's use this thing. Okay. Alright, so that will be our plot. Oh, uh, is it going the same way? Yes. Okay, so just a 0.3 degree inclination difference. And we're doing a 24 meter per second burn in 43 days. So, that's all good. We just need to... Uh, just, just turning will probably cause that to be messed up though. Um, well, we're recharging now, so I don't need need to turn. I'll leave it be. Okay, so we'll pay attention to this again in 43 days. Let's try and launch some sort of lander mission. Well, I decided to create a new lander anyway, and that's because I wanted to use the Mooner Excursion module from... I guess it's from the Making History pack. And so... Yeah, I thought it was convenient. I want to send a engineer. Uh, potentially to do things so maybe we'll just have it be Jeb and Bill 
Uh, we just need to get blueberries, a duna stone, and also just do science from the surface of duna. So those three things will be taken care of by this lander. And it has 2,436 meters per second in vacuum at Duna sea level 2,311. It's got a thrust weight ratio of 3.5 thanks to the Terrier. And we're using uh, this fuel tank. Uh, if you attach to the bottom node there, it automatically creates that adapter. We've got a ladder this time. We've got the goo container, some solar panels up here, docking port, and we've got instruments, basic instruments only. And I, but you've already noticed, I've very prominently put these air brakes. I thought about putting, I initially put the parachutes up here. They're 0.1 tons a piece. But I thought, well, there's another way of getting drag. And it's more convenient because I can just retract the air brakes and extend them as necessary. Whereas the parachutes, you know, if it's creating an imbalance for landing, right, I might want to use the, the engine to land a little bit easier. Well, the parachutes, you'd have to cut it or something. Uh, and, you know, eventually you'll have an engineer to repack it. For the air brakes, you just sort of extend and retract. So they're not quite as efficient as the parachutes as far as slowing us down, but they're pretty good. And they're only 0.05 tons a piece, so... Two of them is half the mass of the parachutes. So maybe? Another option is to put the parachutes as a cargo part. And I could put them in the inventory. Well, I could put one in the inventory. It only has 100 liters of inventory. So placing it might be interesting. But yeah, I'll, I'll go with this for now and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Uh, it could be good, it could be bad, but we're obviously going to have a different return vehicle. So we're going to have a Mark 1 pod with some fuel and it will dock with that in order to make the return happen. So we're not having the return vehicle and the lander be the same thing this time. So anyway, I'll subassembly this and attach it to the return vehicle that I already have. And let's make this the root part. So, Duna Lander A. This is the return vessel. It's got almost 1,500. Well, it's got 1,500. It's got some solar panels, the heat shield, of course. Um, we don't need the monitor propellant on here. The docking will be entirely done by the Duna Lander. So, we'll just cut the monitor propellant from here. Maybe we should put it on just in case, though. Maybe mod propellant and small docking ports. Uh, not not small docking ports. Small RCS thrusters. You never know. Okay, so we'll keep that as is, and then we can bring out the Duna lander, and we'll need to send all of this out. So it's sort of an Apollo-ish kind of deal, except the smaller pod there. Only one is going to come back. We're going to leave the engineer over at Duna and hopefully docking to the Duna station. And we just need one person to come back with the blueberries and Duna stone. So this will work out. Uh, 7.9 tons. I think we need, no, we don't need that docking port there anymore. But we might want a different transfer stage instead of using this for transfer. So I'll just make a different transfer stage. That's probably actually pretty much overkill. I guess if we want to manually capture, we're not using a heat shield to capture around Duna. So yeah, I guess that will be necessary. We'll go with that. Well, the launcher, even without separating the boosters, seems to have enough. Maybe we're going overkill on this yeah the we could carry more we technically need to make two landings because the blueberries and duna stones are in different locations so maybe i'll i'll change this up a little bit and we will allow redocking to this stage we allow uh, one thing we don't have is a remote controller but we are planning to send Kerbals with this, but let's have 
a controller on this stage and power obviously so it'll be an independent sort of like a Gina stage I don't know so if there's and then actually maybe we should use a bigger tank here so that the lander can be replenished with the extra fuel so it can do a second landing and I'll even put some mop balance on on this so that we can replenish things if necessary and also independently dock with something like the station well now it looks like we're actually using the capacity of the launcher at least so that goes there and we might as well go ahead and enable staging on some of this so that's Duna Mission 3 and let's see who should be going Jeb can be in the command module and Bill is actually not a very experienced engineer because we uh, recovered these two Bill didn't get the experience yet so we recovered Daffle as well so Bill needs to get some stars but Bill will be at some risk because Jeb in the command pod at least has a parachute to work with the if there's some launch failure, the mem is not going to be a great place to be. Okay, anyway, with that caveat, let's go ahead and launch it and send it over to Duna. It's, a, it's the Mooner Excursion module, though. I mean, we're using it for Duna. It seems not quite right, but anyway, let's go. Well, it's a nighttime launch, but we'll go with it. For all up, SAS is on, and launch. Let me just check, uh, let's reduce priority on the top tanks for balance purposes. Alright, looking good. Going transonic. Very stable, compared to the last launch, very stable. It was a low bar to begin with. Okay, booster set. Yeah, we could still have more capacity on this launcher. But I fit as much as I could into that particular fairing. I'm not a big fan of unsightly fairings, so... Oh, jeez. I should have checked whether the mem has a reaction wheel, shouldn't I have? Anyway, uh, fairing set. Let me see. Ah, oh, they got me. It doesn't have a reaction wheel. Oh no. Well, I'm gonna thrust limit the RCS so we don't use that too quickly then. In fact, I'll go all the way to 10 on that. I knew there had to be some drawback to the mem. Out of all things to not have a reaction wheel on. Okay, not quite a full orbit, but let's see if we can transfer out or something. Uh, yeah, uh, right around there is where we transferred with the space plane, so... Well, okay, we'll need the same sort of mid-course adjustment after the initial burn, but this is good. And Jeb can turn to the maneuver node, that's even better. Four-star pilot now. Very, very slowly, because of the limited reaction wheels on here. So that is the cheetah. And that is the engine plate. Alright. I don't know why the cheetah's reading so little delta V though. Um, is the engine plate gonna start fuel cross feeding or something? Doesn't look like it. Engine plates complicate stuff I guess. Alright, separation and ignition. Well, it still says only 102 meters per second there, but I think we've got more than that. <laughs> I think that's lying again. I don't know why the engine plates in particular... It, it seems to only be reading the delta V from this tank below the engine plate instead of this tank... Uh, instead of the tanks above the engine plate, even though it's drawing from those anyway. Yeah, that's probably alright anyway. Alright. Let's stop it there, and we're gonna plot the correction burn. We're aiming for a manual capture, 
in landing, so we want to be close. And the inclination to do the mission two isn't critical. But what we're interested in is getting to the biomes, those, and, and they might not all be equatorial. So actually, let me not match with doing a mission two. Let's allow for some inclination here, just in case that helps reaching some biomes. And not that low. So that'll be our planned approach to Duna with this. And Jeb and Bill are on their way to Duna. Try and fulfill those missions. All right. So with that, with our Duna missions underway, we'll see what happens with them next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.